Okay, chapter three, the normal distribution. So we've been doing work with bar graphs, histograms, um, box and whisker plots. Now we're going to actually get into curves. Well, here you can see an example of a histogram from your textbook. And there's a curve drawn on top of it. Now the curve doesn't necessarily go through each bar in exactly the same space, but it goes through each bar for the most part and touches almost each bar in some spots. And um, the curve is just a generalization of what the histogram looks like instead of drawing bars. But what ends up happening is the more bars you draw, the more it would look like a curve. If you happen to look at this picture, which is also in your textbook, you are now going to see these curves right next to each other. It's the same curve. If you look at the one on the left, you're going to notice that here you can see that the yellow part is shaded on the left hand of that curve. And that the, where, that's to show you that those are the scores of six or less. Um, you notice that some of the bars are sticking out of above the curve, and some of the bars aren't even touching the curve, okay? But that's okay, because if you happen to look here at this other curve, you're going to notice the exact same thing, but the opposite, where here in green, you can actually see parts of the um, histogram sticking out over the curve, but here we end up having this part, which is an open space, actually shaded. If you were basically to take the area of these two green parts of the bar or you were to take those, or take those and cut them, you could basically fill them into those shaded portions. So the way that you draw the curve, it's still taking into account um, the heights of the bars and everything, but the area or if you were to cut all of those little snippets of the corners that are sticking out over the curve here and you were to put them into where the um, empty spaces are inside the graph in, under the curve, it would fill it all in. Okay, some properties of density curves that you should know about is one, that they are always on or above the horizontal axis. When you have a curve drawn, it looks like it starts and ends on the horizontal axis, but it actually never actually hits the horizontal axis. They, pretty, they go on basically forever and ever. It just gets really, really small and almost hits that x-axis. It always will have an area of one underneath it, okay, never anything different. Um, if you take the whole entire curve, the area will always be one, regardless of its shape. A curve basically describes the overall pattern of a distribution. Outliers are not described by the curve, meaning it, you can't tell that you have an outlier based on how the curve is drawn. And it is an approximation of the data that is easy to use. Of course, no real set of data is exactly described by a density curve, but it's a good estimation or an approximation for us to use about a, a distribution. So describing a density curve, we again are going to use mean and median with um, just like in histograms, which we'll go over in just a minute. But density curves can come in all shapes and sizes. Where here you have on the left hand side, your first one is actually a symmetrical density curve. Okay, because it's symmetrical in shape. You can also here on the left have a skewed density curve, which here would be considered right skewed. And you can have other ones like the ones here in the middle, where you have um, here a bimodal density curve because you have your two peaks. Okay, it's still symmetrical down the middle, but it's considered a bimodal density curve. Okay, over here you have other curves. There's three different ones, and you can see that those have their own unique shape. They don't all have to just be a single peak or skewed in one way or even symmetrical. And the other two, you're going to see that um, there's different ones on top of each other on the same graph, where you can have ones that are actually um, tall and skinny, or you can have ones that are short and fat and more like a hill as opposed to a peak. Um, so the size and shapes, the skinniness, um, all of that stuff doesn't matter as long as it's basically a curve that is an approximation of your um, distribution. So mean versus median in density curves, so just like we've talked about before with histograms, the mean gets pulled towards the tail. Okay, so here you're going to see that if you have a right skewed distribution on the left there, you are going to have the mean is greater than the median. 
The opposite is true if you have a left skewed distribution, where your mean would be less than your median. Okay, so just remember that the mean is always being pulled towards the, um, the tail. Of course, if it's symmetrical like the one we have on the bottom there, okay, you're going to notice that your mean and your median are equal, and it also means that your mode is also equal. Okay, so all three of those M's there, the mean, median, and mode, your statistical um, observations are going to end up being equal. Okay. So after you have your um, shape, you would then find your mean and your median. And exactly what does the mean do? Well, if you think of the mean like a seesaw, it goes up and down and it balances based on if both sides of where the fulcrum is, um, the triangle of your seesaw, t balances it all out. So here you have your seesaw. It's just a little image for you to remember. If you see this picture here, this actually gets more into it, where the mean is the balance point of the density curve. The line drawn there is actually um, so that you can see that it's not balanced. Okay, so you want to make sure that it would make your um, distribution balanced. Here, you're going to notice that, yes, it is skewed, but we want to keep it so that it will be the, the halfway point, basically. The distribution is the balance point of your um, density curve. There are also going to be some new statistical symbols you will need to know in this chapter. Before, we would always use the mean as um, the old mean would have to deal with x bar, but now you're going to instead use something called mu which is the Greek, it's the Greek letter mu, it's kind of like a backwards u, uh, or it like, looks like a u, excuse me, with a longer line in the beginning. And then for standard deviation, we're no longer going to use s, but we're going to instead use sigma. Okay, so you're going to need to start remembering seeing these symbols. Now the reason for that is, because when you're doing the old ones that you were using, x bar and standard deviation, are essentially for a sample. Meaning, if you had a group of people, say you wanted to know something about everybody in Tewksbury. Um, well, you wouldn't necessarily be able to go and ask every single person in Tewksbury. So you would find a small group of people and ask them that question. And basically you're going to say that the mean age of everybody in Tewksbury um, of your sample is using X bar and the standard deviation would be S. When you start applying all of your knowledge about the sample that you took and you apply it to the population as a whole, so that means everybody in Tewksbury, you're going to start using your mu and sigma, which is what a density curve essentially does. A density curve takes your data and applies it to the population, so you're going to start seeing some new symbols. Okay, so x bar and standard deviation have to deal with a smaller sample of people, or a smaller sample of individuals, whatever it is you're trying to measure. And sigma and mu have to deal with the population as a whole, or who you're applying it all to. So here we have um, just an introduction to density curves. Okay, we're going to get more specific through the chapter with specific kinds of density curves um, in ways that they're going to be shaped, and one in particular will be the normal curve towards the end of the chapter.